for the following exercises, sketch a graph of the function as a transformation of the graph of one of the toolkit functions. Okay, so if you're using the OpenStax textbook, the toolkit function um, is what they're referencing in chapter one, section one. There's a list of functions there that they, they talk about the toolkit functions. However, I am not going to go based off of that. I always talk about original functions, all right? And the first thing that we have to do is find out what the original functions are of this and of this. Original functions are always going to be what's happening to your variable, the letter. Um, in this case, it's T, and in this case, it's X. Strip away all of the big numbers and only get down to what is happening to that letter, that variable. So in this case, I don't care. Uh, the original function does not have a plus one, get rid of the big numbers. And the original function doesn't have a minus three. However, it would be t squared. Being squared or being cubed or maybe being in the denominator, those things you cannot strip away. Only strip away the big numbers. So your original function for this one is f of t equals t squared. Okay, second thing is you guys should just know what your exponential function looks like. It's a very easy function. There's only like three plots that you have to really focus on. And this is the same thing as x squared, by the way. So um, in this case, we're just using t because the letter here is t. But uh, any function that is just t squared is starting at the origin and the the uh, the two points that are outside is negative one comma one and one comma one and then you move up to negative two four and then two four and that kind of gives you the structure as to what this will look like okay so this is your original function this is t squared now we have to sketch this graph with all of its transformations. Okay, so we have to figure out what the transformations are. Okay, so I have two numbers that I have to worry about. I have a plus one in here and then a minus three outside. Ticks, uh, ticks. <laughs> wow. Tips and tricks will tell you how to distinguish between a horizontal functions and vertical functions, right? Horizontal functions are the ones that go from left to right, and vertical functions are the ones that go up and down. And it depends on where the numbers you're adding. If you're doing a horizontal function, the number that you're adding is related within the x. Vertical functions, however, is after like afterthoughts, they're plus or minus values after you said your, you know, X value or your T value in this case. So I have a plus one. Is that inside of the function or is that outside of the function? That's definitely inside, right? It's inside the parentheses with the T value. So I know that that's a horizontal shift. So I'm going to say that since we have a plus one, plus represents that it's a shift to the left. So I'm just gonna say over here, our function, we need to shift to the left, how many times? Once, because it was one. So that means all of our points that we just wrote needs to be shifted to the left once. And now let's just gather up all of our uh, shifts. I have a minus three at the end. And I, I just gave it to you guys, right? It's at the end. It's after the parentheses. After numbers, like plus three or minus three, those are vertical shifts. And a minus is shifting downward. So I got to go down. How many? Down three. Now, the good thing about vertical shifts and horizontal shifts is that it doesn't matter which one you do first. You wanna do horizontal shift first and then do a vertical or a vertical and then do a horizontal, that's fine. I don't really care. You just gotta do one and then do the other one. But when we get to harder problems, there will come a time where um, 
there's going to be steps, all right? But if you're just doing horizontal and vertical shifts, it doesn't matter which one you do first. So overall, for all the points that I have, I have to shift left once, and then I have to shift down three times. So let's try it. I'm gonna work with this point over here. And I kind of just wanna make this point blue just so that all the blues are together. And then I will maybe do the shifting ones in red. Okay, so for this point, I need to shift it over to the left once. So now I'm coming over here and I have to shift it down three times. So one, two, three. So this one is right here. Let's do this one now. And maybe I can, you know, make this a little bigger. Actually, it's fine. We'll do it this way. Okay, so shift left once. I'm over here. Shift left down three times. One, two, three. And now I'm over here. Do the same thing for this one. Shift once left. Shift down three times. And now you kind of have the, the left-hand side, so you can kind of manipulate the other side. It's going to be basically the same, right? So you're coming up here, and then you're coming up here. Okay, and now we just draw our graph. There it is. So this is your f of t equals t plus 1 squared minus 3. And that's it. Let's try the next one. So the first thing is, gotta get your original function. So strip away all of your big numbers, only focus on what's happening to the x in this case. So bye bye negative one, bye bye plus four, right? They go bye bye. <laughs> so the only things that are left is the absolute value of that x. So the original function here would be h of x equals the absolute value of x. Okay. So what does this function look like? It's very, very simple. It kind of looks like the first one that we did, uh, just a little bit different. You still start from the origin, so I'll make all these blue. And then it's like a V, linear V. And that's it. So I'm just going to kind of draw this. There you go. They should all be, you know, the same number. I pretty much did that. Okay, perfect. So that's what the absolute value of x looks like. Memorize those two graphs, those two original functions. It will help you guys out a lot. Now let's just plug in what's being done. Okay, are there any horizontal shifts? Are there any numbers that are inside the parentheses of the actual function? Well, I see that I have a, a minus one here, right? Would this be inside the function or outside? This one is inside. Technically, there is a parenthesis. Everything is being absolute valued. And if I said square rooted before, I'm so sorry. I meant absolute value. So this is the absolute value of x. So this minus 1 is a horizontal shift. It's a 1. Negative means shift to the right. So I'm going to shift to the right, one, because the number was a one. And now let's look, I have a plus four. Is this inside the function or outside? It's afterwards, right? It's a vertical shift and it's a plus, that means that it's shifted up. So we shift up four. And you gotta do this with every point. Once you get better at this, guys, it will just come naturally. You'll kind of visualize where it's got to go. But for all three of these points, I'm going to go to the right one and then up four. So I will maybe do this one in black. So for this point, I'm going to shift to the right one and then move it up four. So one, two, three, four. This point, I shift to the right and then move up four. This one should be over here. This one, now you kind of see where they go. And that's it. Perfect. This is your new function, the absolute value of x minus 1 plus 4. Okay, that's it, guys. What do you think? 
Um, yeah, let me know in the comments what you thought. Um, if this video helped you, please hit the like button. That will give us an inclination as to whether you guys liked it or not. If you want to subscribe to the channel, that'll be totally awesome. And thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Um, I, I hope you guys are having an awesome day. And if you guys are on the playlist, there's more fun and transformation math stuff to come. So I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, bye-bye.